remember Brave New World, where every time anybody raised their voice, they were given a, a gram of soma and told a gram is better than a dam. And so nobody ever had a thought in their head. Well, that's a terrible drug. Let's not introduce that. Uh-oh, the bad news is we've had it for decades. It's called television. You know, we have millions of people in larval, low awareness lives in their little condominium apartments, just ladling this garbage into their minds. The average American watches five and a half hours of TV a day, so imagine how much time these people watch. I mean, to, to think of that as human at all, if that were a drug, we'd be up in arms. You know, if people were loaded at home with that level of mental condition day after day after day, we would, we would do something about it. <clears throat> what, what can we do to, make, to ameliorate our situation? Well, I have always been an optimist. I'm more optimistic right now than I have been for a long time because sometimes when you're an optimist, you're an optimist simply on principle. You believe it's going to turn out all right, but you don't see how it possibly could. I'm beginning to see how it possibly could turn out all right. Iliad wrote a book called Shamanism, and then he subtitled it The Archaic Techniques of Ecstasy. Now, he wrote the book in French. In French, technique has a connotation that it doesn't have in English. It means both a way to do things and it means technology. Later, the French sociologist Jacques Ellul wrote a book called Propaganda. And the little banner under which his book flew, which is printed right on the frontispiece, is he says, there are no political solutions, only technological ones. The rest is propaganda. And then he spends 200 pages explaining what he means by political solutions, technological solutions, and propaganda. By Ellul's understanding, I agree. I think ideology is toxic. All ideology. It's not that there are good ones and bad ones. All ideology is toxic because ideology is a kind of insult to the gift of human free thinking. I mean, if you adopt some ideology, Leninism, Mormonism, it doesn't matter, then you have all the answers. You just go and look in the catechism. Well, I don't know why they issued you a brain. They could have just given you the catechism. Uh, technology as the counterpoint to uh, ideology is a very different animal. Now, right now, we're going through a technophobic phase because people think technology means exploding nuclear power plants and uh, you know, irradiated food and TV. But all technology really means, in the McLuhan sense, is the extensions of man. <coughs> the extensions of man. And so language is a technology. Shamanism is a technology. Psilocybin is a technology. And certainly the internet <coughs> is a technology. It's inconceivable that Western industrial capitalism could run on another 500 or 1,000 years. Uh, it, it will not continue as it has. It will deteriorate under the pressure of resource scarcity. And what few democratic values we have obtained, what little space for reasoned discourse has been created, will be the first to be swept away. So it's, it's very, very important that people take back their minds and that people analyze our dilemma in the context of the entire human story, from the descent onto the grassland to our potential destiny as citizens of the galaxy and the universe. We are at a critical 
turning point. And as I say, the tools, the, the data that is, holds the potential for our salvation is now known. It is available. It is among us. But it is misrepresented. It is slandered. It is litigated against. And uh, it's up to each one of us to relate to this situation in a fashion that will allow us to answer the question that will surely be put to us in some point in the future, which is, what did you do to help save the world? Marxism-Leninism ideology is being pumped into the soft heads of, of, of at least three generations of American students without being challenged or counterbalanced by the basic values of Americanism, American patriotism. The result, the result you can see, most of the people who graduated in the 60s, dropouts or half-baked intellectuals, are now occupying the positions of power in the government, civil service, business, mass media, educational system. You are stuck with them. You cannot get rid of them. They are contaminated. They are programmed to think and react to certain stimuli in a certain pattern. You cannot change their mind, even if you, if you expose them to authentic information, even if you prove that white is white and black is, uh, is black, you still cannot change the basic perception and the logic of behavior. In other words, these people, uh, uh, the process of demoralization is complete and irreversible. To get rid of society of these people, you, have, you need another 20 or, or, or 15 years to educate a new generation of patriotically minded and, and, and uh, common, common sense people who would be acting in favor and in the interests of, of the uh, of, uh, United States society. And yet these people who've been programmed and, as you say, in place and yes. who are favorable to an opening with the Soviet concept, mm -hmm. these are the very people who would be marked for extermination in this country? Most of them, yes, mm -hmm. uh, uh, simply because the psychological shock when, when they will see in future what the, what the beautiful society of equality and social justice means in practice, obviously they will revolt. They, 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 will, uh, they, they will be very unhappy, frustrated people. There will be no place for dissent in, in future Marxist-Leninist America. Uh, here you can, you can get uh, popular like uh, Daniel Ellsberg and filthy rich like Jane Fonda for being dissident, for criticizing your Pentagon. In future, these people will be simply squashed like cockroaches. Nobody is going to pay them nothing for their beautiful, noble ideas of equality. This they don't understand, and uh, it will be greatest shock for them, of course. The demoralization process in the United States is basically completed already. Most of it is done by Americans to Americans, thanks to lack of moral standards. As I mentioned before, uh, exposure to true information does not matter anymore. A person who was demoralized is unable to assess true information. The facts tell nothing to him. Uh, even if I shower him with information, with, with authentic proof, with documents, with pictures, even if I take him by force to the Soviet Union and show him concentration camp, he will refuse to believe it until he, he is going to receive a kick in, the, in his fat bottom. When a military boot crashes his then he will understand, but not before that. That's the tragic of the situation of demoralization. So basically America is stuck with, with demoralization and unless, even if, if you start right now, here, this minute, you start educating new generation of Americans, it will still take you 15 to 20 years to turn the tide of, uh, of ideological perception of reality uh, back to normal, no, normalcy and, and uh, patriotism. Most of the American politicians, media and educational system trains another generation of people who think they are living at a peacetime. False. The United States is in a state of war, undeclared total war against the basic principles and the foundations of, of this system. What is your recommendation to the American people? Well, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the immediate thing that comes to my mind is, of course, there must be a very strong national effort to educate people in, in, in the spirit of real patriotism, number one. Number two, to, 
to explain them the real danger of socialist, communist, whatever, welfare state, big brother government. If people will fail to grasp the impending danger of that development, nothing ever can help United States. You may kiss goodbye to your freedom, at least part of United States population is convinced that the danger is real. They have to force their government. And I'm not talking about sending letters, signing petitions, and all this beautiful, noble activity. I'm talking about forcing United States government to stop aiding communism. Because there is no other problem more burning and, and urgent than to stop the Soviet military-industrial complex from destroying what is whatever is left of the free world.